Adobe has finally gotten into the AI space, unveiling their new feature called Firefly. This is basically their generative AI feature that's built straight into Photoshop. And honestly, this tool is mind blowing. This new feature is kind of like putting Stable Diffusion directly inside of Photoshop. Hello, I'm Mike Powers, and I'm here to help you supercharge your business and life with automated and AI tools. So anyway, let's get into Adobe Firefly. So as mentioned before, this is Adobe's Photoshop feature. So you're gonna have to have a genuine version of Photoshop and an Adobe Creative Cloud account in order to use this feature. You're gonna to wanna to come over to the apps section here and go down to the beta apps tab. And then in the beta apps tab, you're gonna to wanna to install the new Photoshop beta. Because this feature is only available in the beta version currently, but hopefully they'll roll it out to the full version of Photoshop pretty soon. And then once you have the beta version of Photoshop installed on your computer, you can just open it up and then just hop right into Photoshop. And now you can start using Adobe's generative AI feature. So for the first example, I wanna show you guys how you can basically edit this image to add all kinds of things to this blank room here. So what we could do is we can go up here to the lasso tool and then we can just highlight a portion of the image where we wanna add a generative fill feature. So to start, I'm gonna circle right around here. And then when you're done highlighting a portion of your image, there'll be this box down here that comes up. And this is the new generative fill menu. You'll click on generative fill and I'll type in bed and then we'll click on generate. And you can see it's placed a bed right in the middle of this room here. On the right, you can see three different variations. I like that Adobe gives you some options to play around with. And honestly, I'm liking this image of a bed so far. I think it's really great that it actually added some shadows under the bed right here, as well as put some highlights on the bed over here. It actually does look like it's part of the room. It realized that there was a window on this left side over here, and then it added those highlights here. Awesome. So let's continue on. I don't really like this area over here. So let's circle this area and then we'll add a bedside table. All right. It gives us three images to choose from. This one actually doesn't look too bad. It even adds a little shadow here next to the bed, kind of make it blend in more with the room. Also adds other shadows here to make it actually look like it's part of the room. Okay, nice. Very cool. So let's go over here. Let's add in a lamp. So there we go. We have three different options to choose from again. And these ones are kind of interesting. It almost puts like two lamps in this version. Let's see if we can do this one again. If we don't like the three options that were given to us, you can just click generate again and it will redo the image generations for you. And here we go. I'm actually kind of liking this one. It fits the style of the room really well. It's even got like a nice reflection here on the top of the table that matches with the lamp. So now let's go over here and we'll add in modern art. And there we go. It gives us three more options to choose from. It kind of gives some abstract types of art that blend seamlessly into the wall. They're kind of broken here on the bottom side, but it's honestly pretty good for just getting a rough idea of putting in a painting there. It doesn't look too bad. Kind of like in this image though, it's kind of, you know, a little bit abstract. I think we'll go with that. Then let's go over here and we'll also, we'll type in rug and it puts in a rug over here. And once again, we have three different options to choose from. Okay, I'm kind of liking that. It matches the angle of the room, which kind of lines up with the bed pretty nicely. And how about let's add a dog on the bed here. We'll type in dog and click generate. And there we go. It actually realizes that the dog is on a bed and it kind of makes the dog laying on the bed. This one's actually really good. Kind of messes up the bed right here, but for the most part, the dog actually looks like it's laying on the bed. Let's try another one just for fun. What what if I were to make this and say night time windows? Ooh, that's interesting. It actually changed the entire windows over here while still giving it some lighting inside of the windows to kind of match the aesthetic of the room. This one doesn't look too hot, but I'm kind of liking this one. And also as another tip, you can use this bar right here on the left to move around the generative fill menu. And look at that. We went from basically nothing in the room to now changing the entire aesthetic of the image just by using Adobe's new generative fill feature. Took basically zero work and no extra brain cells. And now we have a fully furnished room. Let's move on to this picture of a house here. And let's say we wanted to remove the house. Usually what you would do is use the content aware tool and paint over the house to make it disappear. But with the new generative fill feature, you can literally just use the lasso tool and go around the entire house. And then instead of typing in a prompt, what I'll actually do this time is I'll just click on generate. And there we go. It's actually removed the entire house, fixed the trees so the trees look okay, and then also added some bushes to fill in where the house was. This is actually so good. It doesn't even look like the house was there, but let's say we actually want to add the house back in. So let's circle this here and we'll say house behind the trees. 
And there we go. We have three different options to choose from again. And it puts a couple houses behind the trees. This one actually looks pretty good. You can kind of see there's some issues here with the trees inside the house. And as the saying goes in AI, this is the worst this technology is going to be. Who knows where it's going to be in two, three, four years from now. This is just version one. And it actually did a decent job of putting a house behind the trees. So now that we have our new house in the trees, let's actually use the crop tool. And then we'll move the picture up a couple hundred pixels and then we'll just click on generate. Firefly also includes the new generative fill feature which also can fill in portions of the image and look what we have here. It filled in the tops of the trees with some more clouds that blend seamlessly into the photo. It doesn't even look like something was edited. Let's try going to the side a little bit to see what it adds here. We'll do the same thing where we just expand the image and then we'll click on generate and there we go. It adds in some more bushes and even continues on this part of the hill here. But let's take this actually one step further and what you can actually do is blend two images together. So I actually have this other image of a mountain range and what we'll do is we'll expand the canvas and then I'll move this image over here. And in order for this to work, you're gonna wanna have all of the images on one layer. So what I'll do is I'll actually group all of these images together, make a new folder and then merge it into one image. So now we have our entire image on one layer and then we'll highlight the middle of the image here and then we'll just click on generative fill with no prompt. And you can see it blends the two images together almost seamlessly and it did a pretty good job considering there's two different kinds of skies here with two different resolutions of mountain then we can even use the crop tool again and expand this image upwards and generate more sky for our image i'm kind of liking this one because it kind of moves the clouds into this image over here let's instead now move this down a little bit and see what it comes up with so and there we go you can see it extended the bottom of the image actually perfectly you can see it almost gives kind of different landscapes of what the image could be like this tool is actually mind-blowing. Yeah, this image doesn't make sense, and the different shadows here don't look that real, but honestly, it doesn't look like there's anything that out of place in that image, and that was all generated in just a couple seconds with Adobe Firefly. Let's say you just went to Italy, and you took a picture of the Leaning Tower of Pisa, but you want to remove all the people around here. The generative fill feature does an amazing job getting rid of other people in your photos. We're going to highlight this lady here, and just click on generate, and she's gone. We're going to highlight this lady here, and click on generate, and she's gone. On. And we'll highlight this lady here. And she's also gone. <laughs> you kind of get the idea here. Literally in seconds, that removed all of the people in this image. And we can even take this one step further and remove all the people in the background here. We went from all these people around ruining your picture to now instantly everyone is gone. A clean photo of you at the Leaning Tower of Pisa. This is phenomenal. So I have this image of someone's eye. And what we'll do is we'll actually use the expand feature to actually generate a person. So we'll say woman's face, click generate. Once again, we have three different options here to choose from. Now, honestly, I'm kind of liking this second image here just because the eyes match up and it did a pretty good job keeping the symmetry with the nose. Let's continue on here. What we'll do is we'll expand it here a little bit and then we'll just click on generate and we'll see what it comes up with. And there we go. It continues on with the face. Let's expand it up a little bit and we'll say brown hair. We have a couple different styles to choose from. Personally, I'm kind of liking this second option here again. The ear doesn't look that great but honestly there is a bit of a blur here so it kind of makes sense in the photo let's expand the image up this way and over this way again and we'll click on generate and we have a few different options here again and these ones are pretty good i'm kind of liking this first one here the face looks a little bit long on the right side here but for the most part it doesn't look too bad so let's do this we'll expand the image once more we'll generate in the rest of the hair and there we go we got three more options to choose from personally i'm kind of liking this third option here and now we'll generate the last part of of the face and there we go we got three different options to choose from again this one is all right but it kind of looks a little weird right here around the chin this one definitely messed up i have no clue what this is here maybe it was supposed to be like her fist or something but i don't know and then this one doesn't look that good at all so actually what we'll do instead is let's redo the generation but we'll only do it a little bit and these ones look not that great, but I think this one here is probably the best. It actually looks like a natural looking face. This one doesn't look too good. The lips look kind of weird there. I don't really know if I like that. And this one doesn't look good at all. There's a lot going on there, but let's actually go with the first option and we'll expand down and we'll say white 
dress. And we'll click on generate. And there we go. We got a couple more options to choose from once again. And I think I'm liking this first option here. And there we go. We have pretty much an AI generated person out of nothing. We actually started from this and ended up with this entire image here. This is pretty insane. It's crazy to think this is how far AI has come. And it's really only been like maybe a year or two. I would never have expected a feature like this to come this soon, but this is pretty crazy. So that's Adobe's new generative fill feature. If you got any value out of this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. It really does help me out. But anyway, guys, I'll see you all in the next one.